Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Cedar Creek Cottage 40cck destination trailer, also referred to as a park model style trailer. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the outside and the inside of the RV, then we'll close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the all-new Cedar Creek Cottage 40cck destination trailer here. We are going to start here in the living room kitchen area and then kind of spin our way throughout the RV here. And then we'll head outside, show you all about the outside too, come back in and close her all up for you. So starting up front here, you can see there is a nice electric fireplace which is basically a fancy electric space heater, but pretty cool, just kind of saves you on propane bill. Got a little LED accent lighting on each side of there also. Just above that, you have some storage space, so you can put a satellite box or a Blu-ray player, something along those lines inside of there. And you have your IRV technology radio with a couple indoor speakers there. And it also has a USB charger port and HDMI inputs as well. Big flat screen TV there, which is on a swing arm. And there's also a safety strap there for uh, transportation kind of purposes. You have some overhead storage up above the TV area. Nice big windows overlooking the front side of the RV. Deep tent safety glass windows, and they do have the pull down roller shade blinds there also. So you have a day and night roller blind. Now the sofa does fold out to a big queen size bed, so you have room here for a couple guests to sleep if you need to. Now in this area here, it's all vinyl floor, except for the slide out section. Now they do have an option for carpet in the living room. So if you do like carpet, uh, you can have that put in this area as well. You have a little end table over on that side of the sofa, along with an electric outlet there. Kind of panning up here, you can see there is a 120 volt ceiling fan here, not a 12 volt version. Uh, now, one thing you do have to remember though, when you guys do close this up, it does get pretty much to where when that big slide out comes in, it can touch that ceiling fan. So make sure the fan is off and stopped before you try to close that slide out up. Very important to pay attention to that when you're closing it up for storage and stuff. You have the power theater seat directly across from your TV area, so you can kick back and recline. Has a little storage in the middle, a couple cup holders there, and also USB charger ports built in there as well. Huge windows overlooking the campsite of the RV. And another thing on these windows, they're standard uh, deep tent safety glass windows but you can opt in for dual pane windows also which most customers do because a lot of people extended stay or full time in these destination trailers like this um, so that's something to consider when you are talking with a salesperson about ordering it you know do you want dual pane windows or the standard single glass Nice large island kitchen as well. Uh, the countertop got deeper and wider compared to last year's version. You do have the uh, 7030 sink and the high rise spring faucet set up there. And then they got these nice little uh, plate strainers or cutting board type of things. If you're cutting up vegetables and stuff, you can kind of rinse things off right there. Big, heavy-duty, solid surface countertops. And you can see there are four deep drawers over there, which are on ball bearing drawer guides. 
and you also have a little flip down door here for sponge holder and some storage down below as well. And the island is kind of a two-tone, so you got the gray on the front and then black around the back and sides. And also the central vacuum is located on the side right there. Now over here you have your large Insignia oven. Uh, they use this in their fifth wheels as well, so really nice large oven for an RV. It has a four burner stove top, and then you've got the glass front, the little LED lights above the knobs. It has a light inside the oven as well. The oven shelves are also adjustable. Uh, so really nice oven for an RV. And plenty of storage on both sides as well, along with some drawer space. Up above, you again have the large Insignia microwave up there, and you have storage on both sides and above the microwave. So a lot of cabinet space here. And a good amount of counter space there as well. Now over on this side, we'll pop up a picture of this too, but you can see there is a large pantry and you have some pull-out drawers and some shelf space up there as well. The big electric residential insignia refrigerator system here. So you have freezer on bottom, ice maker built in, refrigerator on top, and then there's also some storage up above. Over here again, more storage. So you got some drawers, some cabinet space down below. There's also quite a bit of cabinet space up above. The King Wi-Fi router that they do include with the RV. And there's some USB charger ports there as well. Then you have some more storage here on the left. Now directly up above us here, we have another turbo exhaust fan right here. Nice setup. And the turbo exhaust fan here actually works off the wall control right here. And then you have your thermostat for your two air conditioner system. It's a dual zone system. And you have a little light switch here, which turns off the accent lighting in the island and above the island. And then down below your propane leak detector. Now on the sliding glass door here, it does have a little hang down blind, uh, which is kind of like the individual blinds uh, that will come with it and it's got like a little pull across bar there to kind of draw the blinds across. There's a fire extinguisher down below as well. And also on the island there is an electric outlet on this side here. Forgot to mention. Um, forgot about the dinette. Freestanding dinette here with four chairs, and it does have storage in the chairs. The tabletop also pops up, so you got a little bit of storage in there. And then you also have the leaf extension as well. Now, another really important thing to remember, guys, and I sometimes forget to mention this in the fifth wheel version too, that leaf extension needs to be closed before you close the slide out up because it will run right into the side of the slide if you're not careful. So be cautious on that and be careful on that. Uh, you do have electric outlet and USB charger ports in between those windows there, guys. Now going on back this direction, we have the bathroom area. We'll pop up a few pictures of this so you can see this a little bit easier also. And decent size floor space in here. Um, you have the porcelain foot flush toilet, little holder for your toilet paper there. You have some little robe hook holders, and then you do have a little linen closet over here. 
And you'll notice here looking in the bathroom area that this is white cabinetry in the bathroom. So that's kind of the new difference on the model change as well as they've gone to the white cabinets in here. Another turbo exhaust fan up top there, skylight up above the shower. You have the one piece fiberglass shower with the sit down seat in it. And it also uh, has the triple sliding glass door there. You do have some storage down below. Pretty good sized sink right here. And then you have a wood medicine cabinet as well. Now the door for your bathroom is a sliding door. So it just slides on across to give you privacy. And there's also a little metal latch down there to prop it open for travel purposes. Spinning on over this direction, we're looking at the bedroom and we're looking at the optional carpet in the bedroom. So normally the standard is the traditional final floor that you've seen in the living room there all the way throughout the coach here. Um, but this customer chose to order theirs with the carpet in the bedroom. Now up top you can see another 120 volt ceiling fan here. Also I forgot to mention in the living room too, you can see the two white squares up there, the small white squares. Those are returns for the Whisper Quiet Air Conditioning System. So there's an air conditioner back here and another one up in the front. They blow throughout all the duct work, those little round ducts up top there. Um, but you do have to occasionally clean the intake filters there. But they do the nicer Whisper Quiet Air Conditioning System. So when you're in here trying to sleep or in there trying to watch TV or whatever, it's not as loud of a roar as a traditional RV air conditioner is above your head there. Now this one was ordered with the king size bed. So you can do a king bed or a queen bed, depending on what you want. It comes standard with a king, and they have an option for an upgraded luxury king mattress, which is a little bit fancier, nicer mattress. Um, so you got kind of your choice there on what you want to do. Some overhead cabinets above. Then you do have the little end table nightstands, whatever you want to call them there, above the windows. Pull down roller shades, nightshades only in the bedroom area. Now the bed does raise up, so there is some storage and a little bit of area underneath of there that's kind of open. You can kick off uh, your shoes and kind of stash them under there if you want. Electric outlet on both sides of the bed, and then there's also USB charger ports on both sides of the bed as well. Now this was also ordered with the electric bedroom wall heater that is right there, that black square. So that's throwing out some heat by electricity back here. So you have the electric fireplace up front standard, this optional electric heater back here if you want to use it. And then you have the propane furnace system as well. So if you do all three, you could technically, you know, kind of really heat the RV up quicker that way. Uh, and again, if depending on whether you have to pay for electric at the campground or not, that may or may not be a bonus for you having the extra electric heater. Wall switches for some lights and also the ceiling fan wall switch. Your bedroom door is a swing door to swing in and out. And then you have your exit door there with a screen door also. Spin back around here to show you this closet area over here. We're going to pan down here beside the bed, so you can see the little black box down there on the side is your electric box with some breakers and fuses in there. A little bit of room to kind of get around the bed area. Now, obviously if you do the queen bed then you have about an extra five inches of room on each side. There is a hanging closet here which goes a pretty good size depth across that area right there. Little shelf area in there as well. And there's a light in there. Now you do have overhead storage up above. And right here, you can see the little arrow, little sticker arrow there. It's just kind of telling you this door slides instead of swinging open. 
This customer ordered theirs with the stackable washer dryer. So this is currently what they are offering from the factory as an option if you want. If not, then this is just a big storage closet. There would be a little hangy thing in there to kind of store some more stuff on. Uh, this is a Splendide stackable washer dryer, which is vented. You will see the vent outside as well. And then there's some more storage over here. Down beside the dresser area there is another electric outlet that you see. Kind of squeeze back in here a little bit so you can see this a little better. You have a four drawer dresser there with full extending bobber and drawer guides. Another again big window here that overlooks the campsite of the RV. And then they do a 32 inch flat screen TV up there on the wall. Um, you could probably squeeze in about a 40 comfortably uh, if you wanted to go a little bit bigger there. Uh, now you probably could go even bigger if you didn't mind covering part of the top of the window or something there. But um, you know, a 40 would probably be pretty decent if you wanted to do that as well. Well, I hope that was a pretty good uh, idea for you guys there on what the inside of the cottage looks like now. We're going to head to the outside. I want to show you what that all looks like outside and some of the information there. And then we're going to come back in and close it up. I want to show you what it looks like closed so you can kind of see what storage mode will look like or travel mode if you do plan on traveling with the thing. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of this all new 2021 Cottage 40 CCK. We're going to start here in the front section of the RV and kind of work our way around. So the 40 CCK is the front living room that you seen when we were inside. So they have a nice fancy fiberglass cap on the front side of it. When you do like the 40 CRS version, it's completely the opposite. The front would be a flat end and the cap would be on the back as it's a rear living room version. So they basically take kind of the same model and flip it back and forth between either the Cottage 40CCK or CRS. Nice units. But up front here we're going to start, you have two 30 pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator. Traditional 2 and 5 16 hitch ball, heavy duty safety chains. The unit has a typical seven way Bargman electric plug. Uh, which does have four wheel drum brakes. Safety cable for your breakaway switch. Now down here in this lower side here on the frame you can see there's a gas line hook up there so you could do like a portable grill plug-in or something along those lines if you wanted to. Now also the hitch is detachable so you can actually take off the front tongue and support the thing on like blocks or something if you wanted to. So if you do have a length restriction at your campground, um, just kind of keep in mind that will come off and that saves you probably, I'd say close to two and a half, maybe three feet of uh, length there. So can you keep that in mind as you are uh, kind of considering this model? Now the Cedar Creek Cottage is basically the same construction process as the Cedar Creek fifth wheel. So you have a high gloss gel coat fiberglass exterior which is hung over top of aluminum studs. It is not a prefab laminated glued together system. So again, all aluminum studs in your side walls, your roof, and your floor, where a lot of brands cheapen up. They'll go to a laminated sidewall, they, which is aluminum stud, but it's all glued together. Um, they will also go to a wood studded floor and a wood studded roof, again, saving that extra few dollars in money. But here they didn't really sacrifice the quality of the studying or construction of the RV. Um, it takes longer to build a Cedar Creek versus a traditional prefab laminated type of construction. Uh, so overall, really nice heavy duty feel to the RV. Now you have deep tent safety glass windows throughout the coach, standard. Now you have the option for dual pane windows if you want to do dual pane windows. So you keep that in mind. Uh, more for you guys that are extended stain or full timing in these things. I would definitely recommend the dual pane glass windows. 
Now they do traditional hover steps on the cottage. Again, these are more of a park model style, so they are expecting a lot of people which tend to like build decks or get fancy mobile home style steps and put around them kind of thing. But you have two traditional hover style entry steps here because you do have two entries. Now you have the uh, sliding glass door as your main entry, and then you have a traditional RV door back there for the bedroom entry. You have the large folding entry handle there. Panning up a little bit, you can see you have a traditional porch light. Now the unit is also still prepped for the four camera security system if you wanted to do that, even though you're not driving it around. So there is a prep above that light for a camera. There is also a prep here for another camera, kind of going back toward that door area. Two outdoor speakers. And also an outdoor TV hookup there. If you wanted to hook up a TV, you have an electric outlet and you also have uh, the cable outlet there as well. Now, even though, again, this is more of a destination trailer, you still have heavy duty tires. You still have dual axles, four wheel brakes, easy loop hubs. They didn't cheapen up. So you're still getting the Dexter never just brakes, the Dexter, uh, you know, kind of setup there. So nice feature to have. Backing up here a little bit, you can see you do have a pretty large awning that is standard on the RV. It's a power awning. Now we do get some customers that request not to have that as again, they're building a deck and kind of doing a whole little roof thing over top. So some customers will choose to delete that feature. Uh, so if that does interest you in something you want to do when you order your camper, ask your salesperson about that. The unit has heavy duty stabilizer scissor jacks on all four corners and then they have four jacks in front of the tire and behind the tire so you have a total of eight stabilizers if you want to do all eight you can also see that the fiberglass is kind of a light grayish color fiberglass where last year's version was more of a lighter cream color kind of a beige color again prepped back here for the observation or backup camera on the top up there so you could do either or. And the black little uh, thing down here in the middle is the dryer vent. As you've seen when we were inside, this one was ordered with the stackable washer dryer and the factory installed that and also put in the dryer vent. Now you can do all of that aftermarket if you don't uh, order it from the RV manufacturer that way, but it can still be done little storage door right here kind of a little access panel and basically you kind of see you can store a little bit of stuff in there now we're going to close up the slides here real quick so we got a little bit more room to show you down this side so we'll be right back all right now we're back here we got the slides all closed up so it'll be a little easier to show you down the side and you can also kind of see what it looks like closed as well um, so here we have our water heater area, 20 gallon electric water heater system. Again, this is kind of a park model style camper, so they're not really expecting you to travel with it. So a good electric heater does the job. Now they do have an option for a gas and electric version now. Uh, that's actually a real recent ad for an option where previously they wouldn't do it, but they will actually do it now. And it does have a water heater bypass and stuff on it for winterization purposes. And then you also can kind of see your little drain area there too. And it has a little information here on your winterization stuff. You do have a storage compartment here that goes underneath the bed of the RV. And you can also see your central vacuum bag there with some of your hoses and stuff on it. Now, down below, you can see your dump area here. So everything comes out of one tube, but you have a gray handle and a black handle right here. There's also some low point water drains down here as well to drain it for winterization purposes. Your galley handle is actually up underneath of that slide over there. And it's just in front of the, uh, 
on about two feet in front of the middle jack there. So you'll have three handles to pull, but everything comes out of one dump. Now here you have your black tank flush, your fresh water connection for filling up the holding tank, and then you have your city water for permanent water hookup. Back in behind here, you also have your water pump, which does have a water pump kit on it, and a little strainer filter in it. You have your hydraulic selector valves to turn on and off the hydraulic slide rooms if you want. To manually override these slides is done here. Then there's also another backup button there as well to run the slides in and out. But that's your hydraulic reservoir. And you also have a fuse link back in behind here, uh, protective fuse link. So in case that does stop working, you wanna check that. Now, another little thing that a lot of people don't know much about or tend to forget about, there is actually, you can kind of see that little black check valve up there. That is the uh, check valve for the black tank flush. So when you do winterize your RV, you're also supposed to take a little hand pump and pump antifreeze through that black tank flush down that check valve into the tank so that that check valve doesn't freeze and bust. So keep that in mind when you are winterizing your cottage. Cable and satellite inlets are right here. And again, you got the prepping there for the other side security camera if you want. Detachable power cord pulls out right here, or detaches right here. It's a big cord. It's probably about, I'd say 25, maybe 30 feet long roughly, probably close to 30 feet. And that is a 50 amp electric service also, guys. Now under here, you'll see there is the fresh water tank drain. Moving on up a little bit, there is another drain up here. And that is another low point drain for your ice maker. It's also the on off valve for the ice maker there, guys. Um, they hide that up underneath the slide next to the frame and you do want to make sure that when you winterize it that again you pull that and shut that off kind of thing to allow antifreeze to flow through there nicely. On the side of the uh, big slide here you also have your stove exhaust vent up there. Down here on the corner you will have your stickers. And basically these stickers have a lot of information on it that's important to know. So the first one we're gonna pop up here is your gross vehicle weight sticker. That tells you how much you can load into the RV before you really damage or possibly damage the axles and the hitch weight and the framing and all that type of stuff. Also has your tire size and your production date and your VIN number on it. Next is going to be your unloaded weight. That sticker has your VIN number on it and also has your dry weight, the weight of the, the RV when it rolled off the assembly line at the factory. Next will be your tire sticker, guys. And that tells you, again, your tire size and your proper tire pressure. Uh, if you do move this or when you do occasionally tow this thing around, uh, make sure you check your tire pressure. Super important to make sure the tires are at the proper pressure because that is what it takes to hold the weight of an RV. Uh, if you drop your tire pressure down to half of what it's supposed to be, it can't handle the, all the weight. So keep that in mind. Next will be your carrying capacity sticker, which just tells you your, how much gear you can kind of load into the RV. And I just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like on this side with the slide closed as well. So you kind of get a refresher there. Now we're going to head back inside and show you what it looks like closed on the inside. All right, guys, we're now back inside the RV here. And I, again, I wanted to kind of show you what it looks like closed. Um, again, these are hydraulic slides, not electric. So there's one main button on this control panel that runs the slides in and out. And hydraulic fluid flows the path of least resistance. So normally the lightest room will move first, which is usually the bedroom slide, depending on the model. Um, but we're gonna try to stretch back in here and show you what this looks like a little bit as it comes back in. So when we hit the button here,
the bed will come across and basically that bed is going to go right against that dresser. Again, you want to make sure there's nothing in the way. So we're going to stop right there just to kind of show you what this looks like here. So if you had to say if you were a traveler and you wanted to stop at a rest area, you could technically come in here and use pretty much the whole bedroom except to get to the four dresser drawers there. Uh, so you could stop at a rest area or whatever, take a nap, relax, do what you need to do for the bedroom. You obviously have your back bedroom door. You can come right in there from outside. So now going back up here, we're going to focus on these rooms now. So right now, again, hitting the button and our kitchen slide is moving the most. This is going to come in real close to that island. Okay, we're going to stop there so you can kind of see what this looks like. So again, really close. You want to make sure there's nothing in the way of the slide. Make sure your drawers are all closed, especially these ones over here. When you're going in or out, guys, you want to make sure that the cabinet doors didn't pop open and travel. So when you again first get this thing, check that stuff before you even touch the slide button. Now continuing on the rest of the way in, the big slide here kind of comes straight in. I'm going to stop here for just a second. I want to show you this. This is a flush floor slide. So you kind of see the mechanism down there, the black stuff, the white stuff. That is where the floor drops down below the main plywood floor decking kind of thing. So that drops into that place so that when you're going in and out of the dinette area or sitting at the theater seat over there, there's not a lip that you're going to stub your toe on or have to kind of balance over. Uh, so that is the purpose of a flush floor is to kind of help you with that situation in your main living area. Carpet also helps hide that mechanism and doesn't break apart as easily as the vinyl floor would if it was on there. Because we get questions about that all the time. Um, they've tried that in years past and the vinyl stuff just going over those mechanisms going in and out on fifth wheels and stuff like that a lot tend to crack and break from people stepping on it and things like that. Um, so carpet seems to be the easiest fix for the problem right now. Just continue to hit the button and it'll keep coming the rest of the way in. Again, make sure the side of the uh, leaf extension on the dinette is closed and not left open. You kind of see here again when it closes all the way up, it is really tight. So you can't really walk around in here, this section, when it's closed. Now technically if you're an agile person, you could kind of climb over the countertop a little bit to get to that in an emergency situation or whatever. Um, but for the most part, if you stopped at a rest area and a travel on one of these things or just came in to kind of do something while it was in storage, you could get to your refrigerator, you could get to parts of the RV, the bathroom, and the bedroom kind of stuff. And then when you go to put it out, you just hit the button and everything goes right on back out. Um, so kind of the same way, you know, we start to roll this thing out. You can see the bedroom is moving. And when the bedroom gets to the stopping point, then it's going to spin around to the other side over here. We're going to spin the camera around here. Again, guys, be sure to check out CouchesRVNation.com. They're one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. They are also the largest Cedar Creek dealer in the country and will definitely save you guys a ton of money on a new RV if you're interested. Thanks again, guys, for checking out my videos. Really do appreciate you.